Blog4j and vulnerabilities. And whatever Scott wants. That's work appropriate. <laughs> B U L N. Chat. B U L N E R A B I L I T Y. I'll check it. I'll check, check it in Docker. You can, if you were watching my screen share, it literally says log for j vulnerability. Well, that's what the UK put it as. Yeah, sir. Log for shell is the other the other common yeah. name if you don't want to type those numbers in. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Cloud Native Coffee Hour. I'm your host, Sam Delamarter, and with me today I have Dan McCracken and Scott Williams, first time on the stream. Thank you, Scott. Um, Thank you, Sam. Today, we're going to talk about Log4j, because everybody's talking about Log4j. Um, well, the bad parts of Log4j. The, the, the bad not parts. Not the good yeah. parts of Log4j. Not, not the logging part. Right. So, Log4j vulnerability, obviously super prevalent right now. Um, so we're going to talk about that and maybe some other things related to vulnerability remediation in a cloud native world. Dan McCracken, do you want to start by sharing? We didn't really have a plan for this or. Well, I would say that the world didn't have a plan for this, Sam. Ooh. Um, so it's like, you know, what, what a week. Um, pretty disruptive it's like it's like a micro pandemic of computer systems it feels like i've heard it i've heard it um referred to as another y2k-esque thing from from an old veteran uh <laughs> of the tech world and i would say no those aren't the same thing but uh <laughs> uh you know it seems bad and you know scott scott brought this up as like a really good topic an obvious topic in hindsight, but man, at the time I was like, oh, that's a really good idea. Yeah, we had uh, this idea several days ago, all right? Yeah, right when it was vulnerable. To, um, and it seemed like the right thing to talk about, and everybody's talking about it. Certainly the biggest situation in a long time, if not for a very long time. And um, certainly since I've been in this kind of kubernetes role let's say so i'm looking at it through that lens and i'm really interested to hear what scott is thinking about it because um and actually scott maybe if you want to do a little intro like what's your background you want to tell the people well sure so um i was not a classically trained uh developer uh coming out of college um but after uh a few years as day as a data cleaner decided that wasn't for me and uh retrained as more of a server-side Java developer. And after a year working at a contracting firm in Ann Arbor, I moved out to the Grand Rapids area where I met many of uh, the developers, that, uh, all of the developers that you uh, see here today and now get to work with them again as part of uh, Devs Operative. So most of it has been in Java integrations, my work. So this is <laughs> right in the backyard, absolutely. So what would you say your specialty is? Because because I could tell you what I think your specialty is. Mm -hmm. Um, pr probably for Java integrations would probably be guaranteed delivery systems. Oh, would probably be what what I would what I would put on it, and then just standard integrations of RESTful driven web services. Yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Not yeah. what you were expecting. No, that's that's pretty big brain. I mean, you're just my spring guy, basically. I think that is why. <laughs> also, you're my fix my Maven Palm guy. Yeah. Dependency management for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when Scott, when you heard this situation occurred, what was the first thing that ran through your mind? Um, it ran back to probably a. The 2017 meeting we had when we were writing our new the new SOA platform for the company we worked for prior to this and we were trying to figure out the logging framework we were going to go with because this was J Java 8 which was very new to us at the time and it was it was a new start it was a greenfield and uh, we had a recommendation document that uh, we wrote up and the recommendation was log back or log for J2 mm. and I mean, they both had a lot of features, and it was like, well, there there are high, higher performance metrics from log for j two, but logback's the default. And as good, you know, we we love defaults, especially when we don't have to change them. And that, I mean, I think that was what made us go with that back in the day. So that immediately is what I thought about, even though I don't work for that company anymore. There's still mm -hmm. some stewardship felt there. So you'd say. We made the the biggest brain, farthest, best forethought in the industry. Industry leaders helped us. I mean, the, Car <laughs> the Carlos Henrys of the world helped us make this decision. Absolutely. Paying and dividends. I, I've seen people say, had Spring Boot come out two years later, that they would have picked Log4J2 as the default. But who who can tell for sure? Who can know for sure? Okay, so Logback was, is not Log4J. Logba Logback is the Spring default. Log4j2 is the library that this is wrecking. I thought it was Log4j1. So, and there, yeah, I, I, and there are definitely some misconceptions out there. And uh, yeah, I, <laughs> that's why we're talking and, about. And uh, we we can we can talk we can talk about <laughs> that. And that that is one of those that is some people are saying, oh well, this affects you know every Java app ever. It's like, well, that's you know that's not that's not true. There are many logging frameworks in the Java ecosystem. And there, there are some reasons we arrived at that, hmm. but it doesn't affect everything. There are plenty of other logging frameworks, such as Logback. There are, you know, some people that use a logging setup that's just set up in the JDK itself, called the JDK Logger. Um, so while certainly many apps are affected, it is still a subset of the community um, as a whole, hmm. um, and it does affect a range of the Log4j two versions. Um, one thing I also hear, you know, that's not just if you're still on log for J1, it's not really a cause to celebrate as that's been out of service for a while. And there are other vulnerabilities in there that just aren't going to get closed. So it's really just another reminder to try to stay up to date. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, let's uh, got a couple got a couple articles here we could poke around and maybe explore. Because, yeah, I'm very much a student here, um, trying to get up to speed. You know, as a newly minted CKS person, what great timing. I swear, the simulation just winks at me so hard sometimes. It decides to break the internet. Um, I prefer it didn't. Um, so if we want to kick it over and just let me know when that transition has occurred. I've got... I've got the official. Okay, thank you very much. We've got the official. My producer is telling me we're live with the screen. And this is the CVE thing. This is the CVE site. I think this might be the official site. I got to it from a different one. We'll look into these other articles later. But I guess step one, because I'm an idiot. <laughs> is this like the official, official thingy? It seems like it. I mean, it's sponsored by yeah. DHS, Homeland Security. Seems legit. Okay, Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. I'm gonna go ahead and say we're at the right we're at the right page. And what do we got here? CVE 2021. 2021, best year ever. Uh 2021, 44, Is there not like a smart uh like title for it? It's just giant description. I wish it, I wish they came up with like, you know, like a, a pet name for it, or a code name even. Apache log for J two, two point beta nine through two twelve, two point twelve, 
2.13, 2.15. Features used in configuration log messages and parameters do not protect against con attacker controlled LDAP and other JNDI related endpoints. An attacker who can control log messages or log message parameters can execute arbitrary code loaded from LDAP servers when message lookup substitution is enabled. Message from Log4J, this behavior has been disabled by default. Okay. And 16, 16 plus has been completely removed. So wait a minute. Now, it, this is the uh, the biggest thing I learned, one of the biggest things I learned from doing the security stuff. And just, I've been in a couple of security uh, pen testing classes as a recipient of the pen test. And then you're like, oh my God, we got to see what the hell this guy did. Um. I always used to think, oh, there's nobody would ever exploit that stuff. It's like super hard and complicated. No. The one thing I learned is that hackers and people that want to do bad stuff, that's all they know. Actually, they know that as good as we know how to try and set up Kubernetes on pies and stuff. Um, like that's their business. And uh, it's second nature to them. So you're telling me, because this this would blow my mind if I was to try and learn how to do this as as a a normal, I'm going to say a novice administrator at this point compared to doing this. You have to, you could inject stuff through LDAP into a log4j connection and take control of a system. That's what you're trying to sell me on? Do you know anything about this? I, this blows my freaking mind when we when I hear about this kind of thing. Yeah, definitely forces some evaluation in the historical <laughs> context of it. As in, how how did how, what is Jindy? How did it end up here? How did we arrive here? And when you look at Jindy, or <clears throat> to get the full <clears throat> name of it, Java Naming and Directory Interface. In that Java culture, there's always there's always been a demand is we need to be able to load things in at runtime. Mm. It's not, you know, a lot of languages they prefer, you know, oh, it would be great. I just want to know all my classes at compile time. That has never been the Java culture. And there, there are a lot of reasons for that. Back, back in our earlier days, we used Jindy to inject our data sources in. We would decouple that and deploy a little a war, a web application resource, just say, you don't know your data source, you know this string. Mm -hmm. And the big server would inject it in and you could share one data source for all manner of wars. Same idea we would use it sometimes for JMS. And it could definitely be noted, you know, that that has fallen out of favor, mm -hmm. you know, for a variety of reasons. But in addition to that, to, you know, to, to be able to load that in, we, we have this other way of, you can also actually look up and load entire remote classes. And, you know, I, I see, you know, there are definitely some critiques over, you know, there's too much power, you know, in this language and these libraries. And it's like, well, that ability to spin up and proxy and load classes and data, it's like, well, that that's the reason the language is so popular in a lot of ways. We need to be able to load in this class path. We need to be able to write these proxies that add my transactions. And do my scoping so you know it's definitely a double-edged sword uh i think here and it's like well it's it's like nuclear power some of these things it can be used for good used for evil and it's it and i think if I, eventually the need came in for log for j where it was like well it would be great if we could do with jndi an ldap lookup with you know it'll have, it'll have a user <laughs> id and boom their name is in my message it'll be easy to audit oh and i i, I bet it sounded great at the time and you know you've you've got three about three people maintain the project part time with for all these companies. You know they don't not not every company that uses it donates back. And I'm sure that pressure was there. I should add this feature. Hmm. How much power I can give to my users. So it's I think it's really tough out there when you're balancing those features uh, as a project. Is this an open source project? This is an open source project. So even yes. the open source community was kind of pressured to, or in this case, you know, what you're suggesting. And I think you lay out a pretty fair uh, just human case for, you know, yeah. these are people, these are people just writing software, trying to do good stuff, um, you know, like, and uh, hey, here's a feature. I mean, if I was that person, I probably, you know, you're obviously 
And maybe this is a good learning case for, for the open source community to be like, hey, we got to be extra. I mean, I'm sure they're very, very scrutinous in general. Certainly, this is another, uh, you know, gut check and be like, hey, how scrutinous should I be? <laughs> should I be extra? Maybe we're going to be extra yeah. next time. Yeah, because because to me, like I think about it and coming from the cube context of KubeCon and yeah. studying for the CKS, yeah. you, you think of Log4j and why this issue is so prevalent is because it's used everywhere, right? Like there's that. And my first thought was, man, how do you know that you're using it? Because like we had to update Atlassian tools. You have to update every single tool that's Java based. And so, you know, if you're relying, you know, we, we pay Atlassian for these tools. Do you know what all is in there? Not necessarily. So it comes back to the, the software bill of materials type work where it's like, you don't even know what you're running because you pulled in some dependency that pulls in a dependency that pulls in a dependency. Yeah. It can be scary stuff. Yeah. It's really interesting. Uh, all right, let's check out. So this is the, this is the main page. This is like the information is stored here. Here's all the refs, Microsoft, Intel people. Cisco. Um, here's an article that I stumbled because you just can't avoid this. I stumbled upon this article. It's from the UK, so it's super credible. You know, this affects the globe. Um, there was something in here. Log for shell. Why did they call it log for shell? Remote execution of code. Just okay, okay. Get get anything from it. Because this is like the short name people are referring to this. Yeah, log, log for shell. Because basically, it's like log4j gives you a shell, or it gives you access to run run commands. Is that kind of the idea? Should be log for jindy ldap shell. Hey, do it. Do yeah, it right. This is better. This is better. Um, let's see. And this looks like it's the layman's version. This is the McCracken version. Uh, if you don't fix it, people can break in. I'm just kidding. I can do a little better. People can break in, steal passwords and stuff. Um, this goes on to talk about how, yeah, there people are using this to just inject malware flavors, ransomware stuff. And, you know, it seems huge brain, but I think it's pretty pedestrian in this world. Who's affected pretty much. Um, yeah. Let's see. What do I have to do? Update my iPhone <laughs> for individuals. Life for We're going to do it. This is half public service announcement. Half McCracken's getting up to speed um in public for individuals log for chase almost certainly part of the devices and services you use online certainly best thing you can do make sure your stuff's up to date hang on let's uh. see what do we got i think i already clicked the update button today yeah so like snapchat updated thank you Continue to update. You know, this is pretty. This is pretty good advice for organizations. Good luck to you, is basically uh -huh. what they're saying. Web apps, network devices. See, this that would drive me. Do you imagine you have the you have these like half million dollar routers and firewalls and stuff? It's like, oh yeah. Good luck. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, the firewall is hacked. You, you hate to see it. I mean, I I really hope that stuff's not happening. Uh, so, right, and yeah. uh, yeah, so okay. I mean, right, and it's just, it, it's crazy to think about all the, the resources you may be running in production that you don't think about having a dependency on Java at all, you know, let alone some logging dependency, you know? This isn't necessarily just for for organizations that write Java code, right? Anything you use, such as Atlassian Bitbucket, might have this dependency and might be affected. And that, you know, it's we're, we're talking about this specific one, you know, this specific vulnerability. But it really just highlights, like in general, 
do you know what you are running on your production servers whether it's your code or another company's code it doesn't matter like i don't know that's that's what i find the most interesting about this issue is just how you know as an organization as a devops engineer as a developer like how are we thinking about these things especially going forward you know how do we identify these how do we prevent these how do we mm -hmm. remediate these when it does happen and from the from the application developer perspective this is this is vulnerability because it was just on by default is that the idea is that what it, is that what i call it so it's like you'd have to really go out of your way to like turn off some of these default features not out of your way but you'd have to think about it and if yeah. you're writing an app are you going to think about every every parameter you could flip for every library you pull in? Right. Especially right. maybe going forward, people are going to be super careful with mm -hmm. logging. That's good. Even though. Yeah. Um, and I, I feel like this is really good. I hate to say it, but I mean, the, what a great timing for us because we just mm -hmm. went, went through CKS. Um, and then I think last week or the week prior to the stream, we went over a bunch of the security tools that yeah. that we learned about. Um, and I feel like uh, we were talking about like Trivi. Um, you know, if you were to fire off Trivi against all of the images that you're running just in, in your Kubernetes cluster, this should show up if it's affected, right? Like if you if it yeah. downloads the latest bits, um, assuming that their backend database is up to date already. Because mm -hmm. it's somebody's job to do that. Yeah, it would be Aqua Security's definitely taking care of that. Amongst other amongst everybody else in the world worried about losing all their data and their you know, billions of dollars and stuff. Yeah. So shout out to the Cloud Native Foundation uh Twitch channel, competing Twitch channel here. Um they they had an end user guest from Penn State today and he was kind of talking about their build pipelines and they do have something like that built in. Um, and so, yeah, all their builds started failing because there was a new zero day vulnerability that, you know, Trivi, I believe was what they were using. Oh. Um, so Trivi's database got updated and now there's a new, you know, critical or whatever they call it, um, vulnerability. And so their build stopped failing or fa started failing, you know, until they made that update. Um, that's one way to find out. So I've got, I've got another article. It's called a flaw state uh, ZDNet. Very credible. I don't know. It was on, it was on the, the news thing that I get sent in the morning. Huh. Um, state backed hackers are using the bug as part of attacks. Warns Microsoft. It's not good. I mean, this is serious business. Do we know if anybody's gotten hosed yet? <laughs> we, I, I think in this article, what they go on to explain is that people are trying to hose people already. You know, mm -hmm. like North, you know, all the bad people. Uh, Phosphorus, that's an Iranian hacker group. I learned that today. Stay away from them. Hopefully they stay out of our business. Please don't, don't take please the job don't. interview from Phosphorus. No. I, well, it's not recommended. That's a really good question. How does one join Phosphorus? <laughs> <laughs> I actually, we would get canceled off Twitch if we start talking about this. <laughs> um, I denounce Phosphorus, and we're going to move on. There was one really good line in here that I didn't do a good job marking. Let's take a look at this other article that I came up with here. My producer's telling me uh, we should look at this article. Log for J, log for shell zero day. All you need to know. Format message, no lookups, mitigation bypass technique. What do they tell you how to do it? That'd be cool. Yeah, so I mean, it's interesting you're bringing up Artifactory. It would be cool to see 
I don't know if there is anything like that, but you know, a feature from Artifactory Ooh. because it has all of your artifacts. If they were scanning for some of those security vulnerabilities, I, I don't know if that's what X-Ray does, but I know I so. JFrog X-Ray is a thing that scans your your artifacts. So. Huh. Okay. Roger, this is huge. This is awesome. Let's, uh, please. Yes. Producer this, look at that. Got a big old image of what's going on. Scott, take me through it. <laughs> well, <laughs> what is this? The I see the bad actor. man. Yes. I see the bad man. He's going to sign up for your service and their name just happens to be that Jindy string, unfortunately. Oh, unfortunate. You name. hate to see, I get it. Yeah. It's a little no. Bobby Tables. Continue. Yeah, it's a Bobby Tables. And at some point, maybe maybe you've got an API gateway, maybe it's a little lower. You're going to go ahead and you're going to log maybe the full request body because we need that. We need it for tracing. We just want the record of it. M many places do it. And log for j 2 looks at that and goes, oh, that's a Jindy lookup. I better I better do it in my expression language. It's special. I'm not just going to print it as is. I'm going to go look it up. And oh, look at that. Jindy interfaces with all sorts of systems. LDAP is one of them. And what do we have from the LDAP? A Java class. Mm -hmm. And then from that Java class, we now have <clears throat> Oh, sorry. No, it responds, and then you. It looks like then you download exploit that class. I'm ex excuse me from HTTP GET, and that is because uh, you can actually download because Java class can be serializable. The Java class that comes back, it's code that you know none of your devs wrote, but it's running on your servers. And now it looks like we're gonna go ahead and just uh, destroy the server with a good old remove dash rf that seems yeah. like just a yeah. troll hacker that's like a yeah. nice hacker <laughs> that, that's like gray hat almost like yeah you're you're doing damage to yourself uh -huh. let me just stop you neutral that's, chaotic yeah I think that, is the term <laughs> you beat me to it i have to sign yes now. I, my life is complete publicly that's, that's fantastic. yeah and i i i tagged scott on on something i saw on linkedin it was Exploiting the vulnerability to fix the vulnerability. <laughs> you could upload the the you know remote execution to fix the log for shell issue um, by using log for shell. It's clever. That, yeah, that That's forever amused for me funny. because I thought about it. It's like even if you had lost the source code, you could just have something you know whatever the entry point to your organization is. I'm gonna send this in to every app every day several times. I'm gonna get all the pods when they restart just instantly inject you with the fix that is and that is something <laughs> that is something <laughs> it's it's big yeah it's big brain because when i sorry scott what were you gonna say something scott yeah just, just when i go through like the list of fixes and you know there are a few different remediations and then I apply them to like, you know, pipelines I have known and, you know, systems I've worked in. Uh, it comes up to a lot of man and woman hours to get all those fixes. Because if you think, what's the easiest fix? Upgrade log4j. Well, okay. What if you have? Like, okay, I have 100 artifacts that run on my, on my Kubernetes cluster. I have 10 developers, you know. How long is it going to take? How, how are, you know, how quickly are you able to remediate that? and get the approvals and do all these things, you know, um, you know, do, do you have to recompile everything? Well, no, you could do jar surgery, but in reality, you're going to rebuild, and recompile everything. You know, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm still myself getting up to speed on that baseline devs operative knowledge. So I'll be interested to see that as I go through some of our curriculum. Um, another remediation is just for a certain range of it was it was like 2.0 beta 9 to 2.10 there is a jvm system property or an operating system environment variable you could set hmm. that turns it off and i started thinking well it sounds easier but again when i play through the systems i work with i was like 
I don't, I don't know if it is. It's like, you know, so there, each fix is actually a scenario for yeah. a company to go through. It's like, do we have that kind of modularity where we could say, Hey, these a hundred images, I want this extra incantation, this extra system property set. And then I want you to do a rolling deploy of all those. And I'd like it by lunch, please. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's a very interesting test. And so it's not, it's not really an opportunity to, you know, celebrate for the organizations that dodged it. It's definitely, you know, a time to reflect and play these scenarios out because the, you know, the, the wheel never really stops turning, you know, nope. you don't know when your stacks number is coming up. Nope. Exactly. Yeah. Um, from a Kubernetes deployment standpoint. Yeah. If you had the scenario, you know, if you were, because I, I think this is it right here. Log for J two ten and later. Um, ooh, this could be bypass and external non default configure. Okay, let's. Of course, some an, a nerd wrote this. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, well, actually, I get it. Wow. Um, and I appreciate that that person right now. But in general, if you're running, assuming that, a default, yeah, assuming, assuming default config. Uh, you could set an environment variable in all of your apps deployments that is this and in theory just turn it off is that what the idea is no lookups true that's kind of cool you wouldn't have to recompile anything in that case like you said yeah um but that assumes that assumes that that's easy to do or you know you don't have thousands of them to do and it assumes your CSCD pipeline in the way that you've you know constructed your library of applications is uh is is low friction to update a lot of things like that you know like if you had a few different flavors like this is kind of the when we were uh on a, on a java team together in the past you know what we were kind of talking about is, and makita and i would talk about this a lot too uh it's like what kind of flavors of apps like what are, what are those different level like there's the there's the mid-range service there's this there's the big service that's got double wars and two pods and blah, blah, blah. And that needs X resources. And we are trying to fine tune those things. Um, but really, you know, you could go on and on. There's a, there's the job, there's the cron job that spits off jobs. Maybe there's batch job stuff. There's a super simple, ultra lightweight service that just needs to be there as a cache or something like that, or it's just a transform. And you try to maintain a, the smallest number that makes sense of those different types of uh, archetypes effectively um, for your Java app itself and for your Helm charts. And we were looking at it more from the, the aspect of the Helm chart and like, Hey, you know, here's the different, here's the four or five different types of charts that we're supporting right now. And we could go and update, you know, if we found a bug in one or something, or when you wanted to tune one, we could go to one spot, make one change, redeploy it it's kind of good to go actually the way that we were doing it there is we, were, we would have to rebuild the helm chart put it in the thing and click the button and go. but it was all pretty easy you know the code change was super easy um, and it was just a matter of change control and just clicking buttons it's like okay well you have it fixed in a few hours you know right i that's i i think a big part of it is knowing that you're affected and you know with this vulnerability there's five different fixes depending on which version you're on yeah. so knowing you're affected knowing what version you're on which apps have that like that can be such a nightmare depending on the company like i'm not gonna name names but like that that could be really hard to figure out like are we using log4j what version are we using you know does does each one of your services use a different version is are you gonna have to do five different fixes depending on what you're looking at or is everything on the same page right. i know scott would have it you know in perfect order with a bill of materials um and it would be relatively easy but still like it's, it's a hard thing to know and this looks like uh an example of jfrog x-ray which looks okay. very similar to uh, aqua yep very similar to aqua i, I like that yep. i like the table yeah, very cool. Like, boom, here's the stuff. On super bad. Yeah, you hate to see it. 
So yeah, moral of the story, if you don't have something like that, that is telling you, hey, your build has this issue, come contact us and we'll uh, set it up for you. <laughs> That's a good pitch. But really, like you, everyone needs to have something like that. I like uh, I like the fear persuasion play at, <laughs> yes. at more uh -huh. at more customers. I mean, we could see. I mean, I've seen this coming a mile away. The people have been getting into in, you know infosec security or DevSecOps, and you know that is that is where that's where all the money is. To be to be super frank, like there is nothing that freaks companies out more than this stuff right here because they have number one they have no idea what's going they don't have no idea what this means they just know um please fix please fix tell me i'm safe and you know money is not an option because they know that they know where's my they know this guy they know this guy gonna want money <laughs> and they'd much rather pay the, the nice people um it's so interesting and terrifying at the same time. Yeah, and nice. yeah, like with this one, even if you do, so say you do have X-Ray or you have Trivi or you have whatever, like that's scanning your own code. The The scary thing about this is just thinking about how, how easy it is to add a base image into your Docker file, right? You don't know what's in there or might not. You know, Trivi or X-Ray would catch that, but you know, as a, you know, devs, DevOps administrator, how easy is it to Helm install something? Do you know what all is in there? Are you going to catch it? I don't know. So I don't know if there's, you know, good tools when it comes to that, where it's like, you know, part of your core infrastructure and knowing what's in there. Yes. Yeah, so one thing that I saw coming out of that um, cloud native foundation uh, uh, stream from earlier today was another aqua product called starboard. Um, and that's kind of like a unified UI um, and reporting tool that you can deploy in your cluster and you can set up trivi and uh, CIS benchmarks and a bunch of other tools. Um, and that kind of pulls it together for you. Um, I've seen some other um, consolidation type tools, um, depending on the client, but That's I nice. just liked that one was, you know, cloud native. This is can't nice. buy Aqua. Yeah. Is there anything Liz Rice hasn't done for us? It's a good I question. assume Liz Rice did all of this. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> Because we saw her talk that one time at KubeCon. She was awesome. Yeah. Very smart. I am hearing we have a question from the chat. And I don't have chat up. Please hold. But with our telekinesis here, you know, what's I'm the hearing... best path? I'm hearing from my producers. Did you get IT? That, it was pretty broad, right? So I, I can't remember what I was listening to the other day, but I kind of liked the response to to a similar question. Um, you, you probably don't start there, right? Like it's not like you're just gonna jump in. Um, especially like we're we're great examples of uh, not starting where you end up, um, and so help desk or entry level programming and just having the mindset of you know security first because I, I again with devops even you know devsecops however many words we want to put together um it isn't supposed to be just a team that does devopsy things or devsecopsy things you know you can start learning those functions and and all the technology that goes along with this in basically any role and just apply it as much as you can to that role. And as you grow, you know, maybe you move into a role that's more specifically that, but. True, true, yeah. Yeah, so SDLC, um, 
you know, the software development life cycle. Um, I'll use myself as an example, you know, like coming out of college, it's just like, I wrote my code and I clicked play and you know, that was it, right? It, it did the thing. Um, but you know, as you learn and really see how those artifacts are deployed and managed and, and the whole life cycle of it, um, that really helps paint the full picture. Yeah, best career path for getting into DevSecOps, IT analyst, or software developer. Well, really, so the the question in the chat is: Do you go into do you start as an analyst or a developer? Um, you could do either. Yeah. So you know, I I started out as an analyst um, and got into software development, and then got into platform engineering and Kubernetes management or Kubernetes administration. Um, I generally tell people to get into, I mean, I'm a little biased. So, I mean, I, I generally say um, a great way to get started in your career, I, this is general career advice in IT, is to become an analyst, to become a master of a data domain or learn a data domain or a business domain. Um, because number one, you can pick up programming. Look at Scott. Scott, what's your uh, what's your degree in? Uh, well, my majors are in history and international relations, Mr. McCracken. Scott's just smart, <laughs> and you know you can learn. You you know you can learn when you're a good learner, and you have the the gumption to do it and the aptitude to do it. You, know, you can pick that stuff up, and if, if that's what you're in, you you can definitely get into that. Um, learning a business model or a data model like a healthcare data model, or uh, I'm really interested in doing um, IT data model, not not necessarily data modeling, but the data model for manufacturing. Like go work for uh, SpaceX or something like that. And you're like, what kind of kind of data do you think SpaceX got when they're building rockets? You know, get at me. That's kind of cool. I want to see the, the the Starship table and the, the um, you know, the, uh, you know, <laughs> the, the, the the chemical inventory table for loading up uh, the starships and stuff. Talk to me about that. Or like the astronaut table instead of the person table. Come on. You know, patient? No. Astronaut? Yes. I'm into that. And so whatever you kind of you can get into, uh, that's my that's my advice for people getting started. You can always pick up uh, software development, I think. And, I don't know if that's necessarily true today. I'm sure it is. If you have, uh, I think Sam gave some good advice there too. It's like, you know, you you have the uh, the mind for it, especially the security mind for it, or you go into it, you learn, you learn about the business, doing whatever task you were able to, to get, uh, analyst or developer or whatever. Um, and then you just have to do a good job and kind of, be interested and give give a shit about it. You're gonna go really far, just just with that. I I can guarantee that. So, yeah, and I mean, you can be a dev. Devs devs are great. Um, you have to learn the data model as a dev too. Right. Like Scott, how many data models have you had to learn? More than just that. one. <laughs> just one. Uh -huh. Just claims, contracts. Just cla yeah. Actually, what was your speciality? C claim syncing and, yeah. and just general insurance. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a good business to be in. Great question. Now, we, we, don't get me started. If we could do a whole stream about it, about how to get started in IT. And I actually just... Yeah, we could do a whole stream about it. Love it. Going through last few of my memorized notes. We oh. talked about the ingress, but when we talk about that last part of the vulnerability, that get to get that serialized Java class, that's one last scenario you can play through. How's my egress policy of my enterprise? Because that get, most of the time, is probably trying to reach an outside website. Gotcha. And so, do you have that allow list, that white list set up? Most of the companies I've worked at, I think the firewall would have actually blocked it. 
the firewall that I would have made fun of every time it held me up for a few days. It's yes. probably what would have saved that company. So that, uh, yeah, that's that's one it's, last piece. It's always the proxy, isn't it? Can't have any fun here. Yeah. Proxy holds you every time. God, how many how many months we wasted trying to get proxy allowances or figuring out that could get through the proxy on our command line? Vagrant and <laughs> all this crap it sucks, and we thank them for doing it. Kind of. So. Scott, what's your what's your take on the career advice uh, question? Before, then we can move on. Uh it's, yeah, the de DevSecOps that is a very interesting question, and I I think I like I think picking the developer choice is just fine. Obviously, some bias there from me, but that can lead that dovetails into so many different things. You want to go to DevSecOps? Great. You want to become a manager? Great. Some of my best managers, they they would make fun of their code probably, but no, I think just that year those two years as a developer they know what's easy they know what's hard when we're a project manager you can do that so i it's just if, if you want to keep going on the dev path if you want to pick a specialization i'm trying to come up with the D, &D word to match chaotic neutral earlier i i, I think it leads in subclass i, I don't know <laughs> but um it, it's such a great i think it's a bridging point to wherever to wherever you want to go so i i think you chose just fine Yep. sir or madam <clears throat> and just uh, try and try and think about it in terms of um growing your skill your talent stack uh as a t uh you know you want a broad range and you know that scotty was kind of saying too you can go you want to you want a broad range of knowledge that goes just a little bit you know you want a broad range of knowledge a little bit and eventually you know you'll find something that you like or that you've just really got a knack for then you maybe you can specialize in that and, you know, if that specialty is uh, having a security mind on uh, just in general for apps or managing platforms, like that's in high demand today. <laughs> you'd, have, you'd have cashed in today um, if you're on the market. Something to think about. All right. Any other thoughts? I think we did great. This, guy, this guy's super spooky. Oh, I'm not sure. I'm hearing, I'm hearing my screen is not being shared anymore. I'm zooming in on the spooky guy, as Kara would say. So. Yeah. Sam, I think it was a great stream. Obviously, uh, an evolving topic. And log4j, obviously huge vulnerability, but you know, I think Scott pointed out, like, even if you're not vulnerable, this is a great time to run some exercises of if we were like, how would we know what to fix? How long would it take to fix it? You know, these are great scenarios to add to your war games, um, you know, going forward. And, uh, yeah, I, I love the timing of all the security stuff we've been looking into. It, it feels good. feels good to be, uh, learning and emphasizing on this kind of stuff right now. Um, so yeah, hopefully everyone enjoyed some great questions from chat. Not sure if we'll have a stream next week, right before Christmas. It's a few days out, we might. Maybe another security topic, I don't know. We kind of make it up as we go along. I'm going to be in the thumb. I could uh, I could stream from the basement, the deep dark uh -huh. basement. Actually, yeah, well, I could do that. From the farm. <laughs> Yeah. I could go like underneath the big windmill and just I could be on my iPhone, Video Ninja, boom. Uh huh. That'd be kind of fun. Scotty, any uh, any uh, summarizations that you'd like to leave leave people with? Just for thanks for having me on. Update those palms. Update oh, those palms. I like it. Yes. Thank you thanks for the everybody lesson. for joining. And we'll see you next week. This and Merry Merry holiday. Christmas and Happy Holidays and, Merry and Happy Hanukkah and Happy New Year and all the other just a happy time. <laughs> bye bye. Bye.